What is up, everybody? Fear Rep Jr. here, back with another Marvel Snap deck build. Today, we are getting into the OTA balance update, the last balance update of the calendar year 2023. And I already have it up and running, so let's get into it. So, I don't know if you guys noticed, but Blob did not get updated. Yes. So fun, but Professor X did. Okay, let's go over it. The final OTA update of the year. Professor X used to be a 5-3. Now, he is changing to a 5-1. Okay, so it's kind of like they're doing the same thing they did with Galactus early on. They nerfed his power, so <clears throat> you might not be able to use it as much. I don't think this is actually going to be that big of a deal because you have so many other cards that you can use to go to a Professor X lane like Vision, like Jeff, uh, technically Cerebro. Now, Professor X can be in a 5-1 deck. He can be in a Cerebro 1 deck. Not that that exists, but uh, if it did, he can do that. It can be He can be buffed by Ironheart. Um, I think that there are interesting things you can do to still lock down the lane and consistently win it, but you're going to have to tag along Jeff. Okay, so that was kind of what I was saying about that. And by the way, you can also play a Tuma. You can play a Tuma on four and Professor X on five and win that lane outright with 11. Um, especially if they haven't played at that lane or that lane is not ideal to play at. So that's what I have to say. Um you know, about Professor X. So getting into Werewolf by Night, the old 3-3. Three, three. After you play an unreveal card at another location, move there to gain plus two power. Now he's a 4-4. Four, four. So let's go over their explanation first. It says, like Darkhawk, Werewolf by Night offers a few different decks and has an early source of pressure that's hard to compete with. Werewolf's also a card that's hard to master, requiring players to navigate how to best leave open spaces at their locations in order to maximize power. When a card strength is enough to unseat foundational cards and other archetypes, that's usually a bit too much. We considered many changes, but wanted to try and maintain the excitement of leaping ferociously around the board with a meaningful threat to accomplish that. We're going to try to move, try moving Werewolf up the curve to a four cost. This should remove a meaningful amount of energy and time from the card and also bring Brood, Brood back from the hold. I actually think that's a good change. It's one less turn, but it's one more power. So, you know, I think they strike a really good balance. I like the Werewolf by Night balance update. Professor X, I think, I think it's okay. And maybe knocking down to a two would have been better. Uh, but maybe the two not would not have been enough for Professor X. Now, Black Widow was the most interesting so far to me. Old Black Widow, she was a 2-1. Now, she is a 3-3. Three, three. Here is the reasoning. Shifting Widow's Bite to 0, negative 1 was an effective boost to Black Widow's strength. I agree. And there are decks playing Widow today that we're happy to see. We're less happy with how easy and rewarding it is to use Beast for some locations to play Widow multiple times. Getting stuck with a bunch of Widow Bites can be fairly frustrating for a lot of decks, so we're moving to a higher cost to make that more difficult. This is fairly similar to principle to the change we made a long time ago to Rock Slide, shifting a card's cost to raise the strength floor but lowering the ceiling. And that change worked well. I, from that context, uh, my phone text going off. From, in that context, Black Widow changing to align more with the way they did rock slide makes sense i'm i'm sad to see it go because it was a great two cost to clog their drawing ability at an early early stage in the game so i'm i'm indifferent about that we'll we'll see how it plays out in practice martyr i do not have martyr yet but i'm still interested in this card one four at the end of the game move to a location that loses you the game if possible and I think that they're correct here. They missed the mark on Martyr. Here's what they say. It's clear that we missed low on Martyr, so we're coming in with a quick buff here. One of our learnings from Martyr has been better gauging the value of simple power, especially for one, right? Which has been devalued in many recent metagames. Lower cost cards are under a lot of pressure to provide power and higher level play. That That's true. Uh, I mean, you can always put Martyr down and then play Professor X, right? I mean, that would be a... You just leave Martyr there, or you play it with armor on 
four, and then you drop Professor X, you have that lane. Something like that. Uh, maybe not that. I mean, I'm, right now I'm just thinking of top of mind Professor X with Martyr, because that's a six. That would be that would be six power. Viper. Let's just move on to Viper. This is actually an interesting one, especially since they just released Havoc. I think this is really going to affect Havoc, because you cannot play it anymore. It's, it's not going to be possible. So, it, it, the... I, Two days ago, I played a Havoc deck with Viper where I switched Viper, I switched Havoc with Viper. What, on turn four? So, Viper's change from a 2 3 to a 3 4. Between an Isla, Selene, and our other changes in the cage, Vex's focus on gumming up the enemy's side of locations with bad cards has received a lot of new tools. As the deck gains options, sometimes it's interesting to look at shifting around existing pieces to see where the play patterns could change. Viper is not a problematic card. Our goal isn't a nerf, but a change, and a 3-4 is interesting in that regard. However, our motivations for this change is largely an abundance of caution around Havoc, which, that makes sense. So, let's, you know, let's see what they said. We tried some turn 3, turn 4 Viper and Havoc ourselves, and it didn't impress. But a lot has changed since then. Loki and Elsa are weaker. Luke Cage provides less certain protection for Havoc, and then some dominant decks have even disappeared. Because the potential for that combo of plays can be so unfun. We're making this change to ensure it does not exceed our expectations and warp the metagame. So they they recognize how interesting Havoc might end up being, and they wanted to get ahead of that with Viper, which I still think Havoc, people are trying to figure out how to play Havoc right now. And I think changing Viper ahead of time before it gets crazy in the next week or so when people figure out Havoc, I think this was actually a proactive approach that is good by second dinner by marvel snap to do that so i actually agree with the viper change let's go to ronan accuser this is one of my most exciting changes i like this change old five three two five five the ronan the accuser has been on our buff list for months but we waited to pull the trigger for a few reasons there was some concern about how to best push past archetypes we were also considered a more significant we're considering a more significant rework Eventually, buffing Ronin had long into Loki didn't seem right. We decided to stick with something simple for now, adding some power to create a more meaningful five-cost threat. I like this card. I like Ronin the Accuser. I like this. And look at what they did. I already I already played a Ronin Accuser deck for you guys uh, about a month or two ago. It was just based around Ronin. And <clears throat> Ronin's under under um, appreciated in the Marvel Snap community. He's a good card really good card and i think like even using zola with him is good so but look at what they did right after ronan maximus went from a three seven to a two six now that's still powerful and your opponent gets to draw two cards but it's not a three cost anymore it's moving maximus to a two cost is huge it allows you to play ronan's still going to be played on five but it allows you to play maximus on four with another two cost card so as an additional support piece for Ronin, we've delivered a buff to Maximus here by changing its energy down one. Maximus was one of the early additions to Silver Surfer, providing a lot of power efficiently as we've continued to release three cost cards, especially Dakin and Sebastian Shaw. Maximus has struggled to earn that slot. We were happy to release to see the release of Blob provide a surge to Maximus. That's interesting, but that makes sense. And we've decided to capitalize on that momentum to see if Maximus could even play a role in other decks. <laughs> I really like the Maximus change. I know it's down one power, but it's also down one cost. Yes, it gives your opponent two cards. But it doesn't always have to. You can zero. You can zero Maximus. Um, or keep it in your deck for Blob. It's still one power less. It's a good card. I actually like the Maximus and the Ronin changes. I'm indifferent so far about the rest. Did I say that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Black Widow is kind of different. Martyr, I think, is actually kind of good. Um, all right. Gladiator. Two more left. I'm actually excited about the last one. Gladiator. Old 3-7, now to 3-8. This is a very similar change to the one we're making higher up to Martyr. Gladiator has been more successful than Martyr, but it seems like there's still room to improve. In addition to generally improving the card, moving Maximus out of the 3 boss slot will create a void for some Silver Surfer decks that did want access to a large amount of power and a man that's an opportunity for gladiator to flex some muscles so that makes a little bit more sense maximus and gladiator were the same right they're both three sevens 
They did very different things. Now, Maximus is a 2-6, and Gladiator is a 3-8. Um, so maybe we will get used to seeing Gladiator in some decks more often. My thing is, is there's a lot of blob being played, and that means big cards are in decks. That means Gladiator, right now in the meta, has a bigger chance to not kill something. I mean... There have been countless times where I've my opponent's gladiator has pulled out an infinite, has pulled out an orca. Um, so that's interesting. I, I I don't mind that change. We'll see how that goes. This I'm actually excited about this. Yesterday, I tried to make a Punisher deck. I tried and I was like, I can't do this yet. Punisher is not more powerful enough for me to make a deck yet. And I am so glad they did this change today. Punisher has been unnecessarily weak for a while. I agree with them. They changed it from a 3-2 to, to a 3-3. I know it's only one extra power, but it matters. Part of the new player experience, we need to be careful about how we adjust the card. For example, a two-cost version would necessitate shifting some other pieces of early game to content to three. Even with that restriction, adding a single power is basically free and should just make the card a more fun game piece. I agree. I think Punisher binding with Ant-Man and possibly a Bast boost to Ant-Man is a really cool uh, idea. That's the first thing I thought of was a Punisher, Ant-Man, Bast type of combo. Like you Bast your hand where you have Ant-Man and Punisher. Punisher gets a 3-3 anyways. Uh, but that's it's really interesting. Um, I mean, you could always Doc Ock that location, right? I mean, Doc Ock, Mojo. There's a lot of synergy that can happen. Um, so, yeah, that is all the otas guys it'll be a brand new season next month usually every single day i make a new deck build but today was an ota update so thank you guys so much for watching the video today i will be back tomorrow with another marvel snap deck build take care guys i will see you then thanks